Of course, if you haven't done so, make sure that you pause the video and attempt or reattempt the question before listening on. We have gone ahead and have drawn a cylindrically shaped Gaussian surface as indicated in the question. And we also have drawn three magnetic fluxes or magnetic fields, depending on what the question was describing. So for example, we knew that there was an inward magnetic flux of this magnitude right here. So at the top of our cylinder, we have drawn a magnetic field line to represent that flux and it's entering the cylindrical surface. At the other end, there was a uniform magnetic field and it says it was normal to the surface and directed outward. So down here, we have drawn a magnetic field line that is pointing outward. Notice that the first quantity was a magnetic flux. So we've used this Greek letter here to represent that flux, but the second quantity was a magnetic field. So we've used the letter B to represent that magnetic field. And then the question wants us to determine the magnetic flux that is going through the curved surfaces. So we have drawn some hypothetical magnetic field lines that are entering the curved portion of the cylindrical surface. We don't know the value or even the direction of that magnetic flux. So we've labeled that as an unknown and it's highlighted to remind us what we're looking for. Now, to find that unknown, we have to use Gauss's law for magnetic fields. And basically that tells us that the net magnetic flux is equal to zero. So what we'll do is we'll take the three magnetic fluxes, we'll add them together and set them equal to zero. So very simply, we would have the magnetic flux one through the top plus the magnetic flux two through the bottom plus the magnetic flux three through the curved sides. And then we set that equal to zero. Now we know directly the value of the first magnetic flux. It was the 25 micro Weber's. The second magnetic flux is a little bit more challenging to determine. But we can see from Gauss's law that a magnetic flux is equal to an integral of the dot product between a magnetic field and then this area vector. Sounds a little bit complicated, but basically because it's a dot product, we end up having an integral of the magnetic field multiplied by the area multiplied by the cosine of an angle. And in fact, it's not the area, it still is represented as dA and then again times the cosine of an angle. So this will be our B2 and this will be theta2. We'll evaluate that integral momentarily. And in fact, since the magnetic field at the lower portion is said to have been uniform, that means it has a constant value. So we can actually factor out that B2 to the outside. You might remember from calculus that if you have a constant, you can factor it to the outside of the integral. So then we have this dA, and then the angle is worth mentioning. Now, if we look at the lower surface here, we have the magnetic field directed away from the surface, and there is this imaginary vector, it's called an area vector, and you always wanna draw your area vector perpendicular to the surface, and also pointing away from the interior of the surface. So if we drew an area vector that is both perpendicular to the surface and pointing away, it would look something like this, and we would label that dA. And you'll notice that dA and the magnetic field are parallel to one another, and that renders the angle between them as zero degrees. So really, this just becomes the cosine of zero degrees. Now, we all perhaps know that the cosine of zero degrees is equal to one, so we can actually effectively cancel that out. So then you're left with just the integral of dA, but the integral of dA from calculus is just the area. So basically we're going to be using the area of this lower surface in our calculation. So putting that all together, we'll just have B2 times the area at surface two. Now we can solve this equation for the third magnetic flux since that is our unknown. So we'll subtract both of those quantities to the other side. And at this point, we can begin to plug in some of the known quantities. Let's take a look at this quantity right here, which was the magnetic flux that was at the top of the surface. Now, notice how we've drawn that. The magnetic flux is entering the surface. And anytime you have a magnetic flux that is entering the Gaussian surface, that actually makes it a negative value for that magnetic flux. That's very important. So when we go to plug in the value of the magnetic flux one, we have to make sure we insert a negative value. And in addition, there's that negative sign from the algebraic manipulation. So we have negative, and then we'll plug in the negative value 
which was 25 microwebers. So again, negative 25 microwebers. And then we're going to subtract B2. And that's simply the magnetic field that was given to us at that lower surface. It's in millitesla. So we're gonna actually have to pay attention to the units here and do some conversions in just a moment. So for now, we'll just plug that in as 1.6 millitesla. And then multiplied by the circular area at that lower surface, that's just pi r squared. And the radius of this Gaussian surface was 12 centimeters. So it's going to be pi times that radius. Let's just convert that to meters right away. So instead of 12 centimeters, we'll say 0.12 meters. And then don't forget to square it. And then this is a good setup, but we have a little bit inconsistency of units. We have microwebers here and then millitesla there. So we just have to make a little bit of a unit conversion here. This negative negative will become positive. So we'll have 25. Recall micro is times 10 to the negative six. So we'll just have times 10 to the negative six. And this will convert it into Weber's. And then millitesla can be converted to Tesla by doing times 10 to the minus three Tesla. So once you make those conversions, you can punch this into your calculators. And you're going to end up with a value of negative 4.74 times 10 to the minus 5. This will come out in Weber's. If your homework system requires micro Weber's, then you can do just another conversion. You can multiply by the fact that one micro Weber is 10 to the minus 6 Weber's. So if you perform that conversion, then you end up with about 47.4, excuse me, negative 47.4. And then this would now be in micro Weber's. So as far as the magnitude is concerned, for the magnitude, we just take the absolute value. So that would become positive 47.4 micro Weber's. So that would be the answer to the magnitude. And then the direction is indicated by the negative sign. We mentioned this earlier that if you have a negative magnetic flux, that means the flux is actually entering the surface. So as far as the direction is concerned, we would say into the Gaussian surface. And that would be the answer for the direction.